Hi, I'm Naomi Murphy and this is the Locked Up Living podcast where we talk with a wide range of people about harsh aspects of institutional life. We also explore some of the ways to overcome them and to grow and develop. I'm David Jones. So join us every Wednesday morning, six o'clock UK time for a fresh podcast. Welcome to Chloe Exodus. Chloe is Operations Manager at BW Design and Build Division, who I understand are primarily uh, office refurbishment and fitting. Is that correct, Chloe? Yes, correct. So uh, BW are a a fit-out contractor, um, and I work in the design and build team as part of that business. Brilliant. And you're a committee member for the National Association for Women in Construction. Yes, I am. Good to have you with us today, Chloe. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for having me. So, Chloe, how did you come to be working in the construction industry? Did you choose this sector deliberately or did you kind of just fall into it? How did it go about? Yeah, so I fell into it. I think probably a lot of people do with their careers. Um, I started off as a, a temp um, for a, a construction business when I was about 20, 21. Um, I was supposed to be there for six weeks covering somebody who was off and um, just doing administration. Um, ended up um, getting a permanent position in a different office, um, working on sort of refurbishment um, and maintenance contracts, but I was still part of the office. Um, sort of quickly realised, I, I don't think I was made for a career in the office, so um, applied to go out onto site and started from there really. I started doing... Um, I worked for council contracts doing repairs and, and maintenance and um, refurbishments for council tenants for a few years. Um, and yeah, just moved around, got onto the commercial team, which was much nicer work and just instantly really loved being on site, really loved the um, the work. And yeah, I just, I, I just kind of fell into it, but really found myself enjoying being on site and being out and about. So what do you actually uh, do? Because it sounds from that description as if you're part builder, part carpenter. Do you do all kinds of things? Oh, no. So I'm not a trade. Um, I'm not in the trade myself. I'm the, the finger pointer on site. So, yeah. So I manage um, all of the contractors on site. Um, now I'm, I'm at a, a kind of high level where I um, have a few sites that are underneath me and we have project managers and I manage the sites and the project managers. Um, but I came from basically a managing work on site and, um, you know, dealing with the client, coordinating the subcontractors, managing the health and safety, uh, managing the build and the quality and all that stuff. So I've done that for quite a few years. And then the last few years I've started to move into um, you know, higher positions and manage a little bit more of that as an over overseeing it rather than being there on site. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And and of course, we tend to think that construction is one of the uh, sectors with probably the worst image for uh, treating women, how women are treated. Do you think that image is is correct? Is that borne out in your experience? Um, I think in some instances, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, discrimination is pretty rife um, as much as now um, there are a lot more positive conversations happening in the industry and a lot more recognition um, of, for, you know, for the need for more women in construction. Um, it, it kind of different levels in my career, I've experienced it in different ways. Um, so kind of being on site, I think my age as well, I was 22, 23 and looking after a construction site, which was challenging I think being a young female or a male at that age trying to coordinate 20 or 30 men that were you know in their 40s and 50s didn't want to listen to me um and yeah so I think that it it kind of partly was being a female partly probably my age um as I've kind of climbed the ladder a little bit I've found different challenges in being you know um promoted um equal pay um and not so much, you know, with the comments or um, and, and things like that, but it, that kind of tends to happen in my experience, um, both on site and in the office, actually. Um, a lot less now, though, I think. People are a little bit more aware. Um, but also, like, the, the stigma of kind of tokenism. I think some of the positions when I've been in, they've, um, 
you know, people, oh, she's there because she's a woman. They want the, the female, you know, she's representing that. And that's why she's there, not because she's good at her job. So it, it kind of is it's found in, in all sorts of different ways. Um, and I've found it's kind of changed really as, as I've grown in my career. How did you learn to do that? Because you know, what you're describing, being a young woman on a construction site faced with 20 men <laughs> of 50, sounds enormously challenging. And I mean, my imagination says you must have gone home most days having experienced all kinds of rebuffs and embarrassment. How did you build up the kind of um, style to to cope with that i think for me my my um way of dealing with it was to be better and improve and you know and i, I still feel that a little bit now that i kind of need to be better than my male counterparts to kind of justify my seat at the table whether that's in my head or you know whether that's it, it's true it's just it's kind of the way that i've dealt with it you know if i didn't know something i would go away and i'd find out and i'd make sure that I knew what I was talking about. Um, the first job that I did on site, I kind of, the first maybe week, I tried to be friends with everyone and that just, it, I might as well have not turned up. I just, it was a disaster. Um, so you kind of have to, you feel and with yourself, you have to be perfect and you have to be this, you know, you don't make mistakes and it, nothing affects you. And you kind of, you get to be this kind of steely, you know, persona if, if you like um and that that's kind of how I coped with it and how I, I, I dealt with it was to you know the rules were the rules and because I found if I bent even slightly that was it I'd lost control so I had to be very no this is what we do and that's it there's there's no speaking about it. there's no change which it's not nice to you know have to be that it's nice to have a little bit of flexibility but I just found then when I was flexible with anyone, I was kind of was railroaded from there on. So I just tried to, yeah, stick to my guns and, um, it's yeah. It's a fantastic description of developing a steely persona, actually. That's, that's wonderful. Are there lots of women working in construction? No. Um, so 50, about 15% of the whole construction workforce is women um, and only 1% are in skilled trades and only 16% are in managerial positions. So 16% of the 15%. Um, so yeah, very low, um, not much representation um, and especially not on site, kind of doing the, the skilled trades is a massive um, shortage there, for sure. Thank you. So you've worked in several different companies have they all been pretty similar in the way that uh, uh, women can engage there or, or are there differences across them for sure yeah um i kind of yeah i've, I've worked for quite a few different companies which, you know it doesn't always look great on your cv but i've actually found i've had to move around quite a bit to get promoted or get the, the higher positions or a better better pay um i found that working in certain companies and being there for a while or, or and you you know you, your skills improve you go and do training you go and ask you know okay now can you pay me what I should be paid and it, you just you kind of you, you're constantly hitting barriers and ceilings so I found that I have moved quite a lot more than you know I would have otherwise but um yeah like I mean where I am now I have to say since I walked in the door I've felt like I can be myself. Um, I felt respected and listened to and valued. Um, and probably realising now that it, it might be the first time in my career that I've actually really come to work and felt I can say what I need to say and do what I need to do. Um, it's, you know, culture is very hard to change. And um, in big organisations, you know, it, it's not easy to shift that. Um, so definitely I've felt and sometimes in the smaller teams and the smaller companies it is that little bit easier because you you're kind of you're very visible in every facet of what you do and people can see how hard you work and how hard you try and sometimes in those larger organizations you can get a little bit lost um, and feel that 
kind of whatever you do or say, you know, it, it's not going to make a difference. Um, so yeah, for sure, it, it is different across different organisations. It's yeah. interesting to hear you talk, Chloe, because you sound very passionate about what you do. You sound like you really enjoy your job. And yeah, as you were yeah, talking, yeah. I thought I really don't feel envious of that position of being there. And, you know, it sounds like, you know, potentially it comes at a personal cost to do that work. And, you know, it's lucky that you can be yourself now. But I was thinking it sounds like there's, a, there's been a cost at times to you in some of the jobs that you might have been in. Yeah, I think it has, it has kind of hardened me as a person, I think. Before I did this job, I, I, I can't remember it, but I, I think I used to be quite easy going. Um, and you, you do learn to, you know, you have to be in control and you have to be one step ahead or two steps ahead of everybody else um, doing this kind of work. What we do is always pretty fast moving, um, fit out and contracts and stuff like that. So you you can't really afford mistakes, there's just no time for it. Um, so it is quite a highly pressured environment. Um, and it kind of, you do have to be, like everyone says to me now, I'm very, very pragmatic and very, you know, to the point, like even in me, I think, you know, you evolve as a person and, and you spend most of your time at work. So maybe that has, you know, affected the way that I see things and the way that I go about getting things done. Um, yeah, you know, it, I, I love it. I do honestly love it. I, do, I am very passionate about it. I'm very passionate about women in construction and trying to improve things and make things easier for people to come through these positions and, and get that representation at the top. Yeah, it's not the, and it's not the only sector where women are in a minority, is it? I mean, you also kind of like look at um, other industries like, you know, being in the prison service, the police, being a, a woman, still a minority figure within those groups. But do you think working in construction poses any unique challenges that aren't faced by women in some of these other traditionally male industries? Um, I think definitely, I mean, you can see it from the figures, the skilled trades is like 1%. And I think the, the time, um, you know, the, the, the time you need to be on site to do those kinds of jobs, they just really don't fit into family life at all. Um, you know, sometimes we are on site six, 6.30 in the morning, um, and weekends, you're expected to travel, you're expected to work away. I think that really doesn't lend itself to a, you know, a working mum um, or people with children to drop off and, or, you know, any of those other kinds of things or looking after a house even. I think a lot of those duties, they, you know, as much as things are changing, they do still predominantly fall to women. Um, and I think that affects, that affects it. Um, there's, a, there's a, something at the moment um, that uh, the RICS, I, I believe, are working on um, about PPE. It's, it's not designed for women, doesn't fit properly, they're at greater risk of injury. Um, I don't know whether that affects people coming into the industry, but it's definitely something that's not considered um, until recently. Same with, like, you know, changing rooms on site, um, toilets on site. Um, they're just, they're all set up for men. Um, yeah, that's it. That's I think that really resonates with the West Midlands police were on the news this week, weren't they? And one of the um, one of the concerns raised with them was the fact that their bulletproof vests weren't fit weren't fit for yeah. women's bodies, uh, so actually weren't doing a job of protecting them. But and also again having to change in front of male colleagues because they weren't, you know, they're just kind of like basics, really, aren't they? That mm -hmm. we'd expect to be able to do your job um, with decency. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of challenges, um, but specifically kind of to that skilled trade, I think that's probably quite a unique one um, mm -hmm. to this industry. Um, I do, yeah, I think, to be honest, like the, the times that people need to be on site and stuff, I think that really does discourage people from doing that job. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the skills as well, that I think in some of those indus other industries you've named, actually, at least on the face of it the women are joining as equals in terms of going through the same training route and having the same skill set at the end but it sounds like you're saying it's quite different in construction that the women are disadvantaged by not having the skills they're not coming with those skills or being trained in those skills in, in at the same rate that men are 
What what kind of factors set the tone for the company culture? What kind of actions could construction companies take to make female staff feel more included? Because, I mean, it sounds like you feel included where you are now. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you see as being the differences between some of the other places you might have worked? I actually think um, it's the most important thing is buy-in from the top. And I think, you know, some when you look at a lot of construction businesses, they're owned by or managed by, you know, white middle-aged men that they just, they can't really understand um, the issues that that we face. Um, And some don't want to, Um, you know, coming to the end of their career, it's not that important to them and therefore it's not really a a priority um, for them personally. I don't, you know, I don't know, but I just, I, I believe that buying from the top is really essential to creating a safe space and an inclusive workspace for everyone where people feel comfortable um i think training is really important for the staff and you know you could the you know the person in charge could be the biggest champion for women in construction but if then they're working in their teams every day and feeling disadvantaged and not listened to and not valued um it doesn't filter through so i think it's it's a massive cultural shift and it's it's really 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 complicated to achieve i think because there's so many different factors that affect it um, but I think training, talking about it, and really, you know, that that push from the top, um, top level, and zero tolerance, you know, to to discrimination, and you know, I think conversations, even feedback from staff, if if you take it seriously, and whether people feel comfortable to speak out against issues, I think that's a big thing. Um, I know that whenever I've kind of raised things, you're kind of you're shut down or you may feel embarrassed or that you're, you know, you're making a big deal out of something that's not necessarily a big deal. Um, and others are quite reluctant to support that because then they fear the same recrimination. And do you, the people who are kind of like in the more senior positions, have they often worked their way up within construction? You know, have, have they, um, is it kind of a, a culture that's self-perpetuating because, because people have, have not worked in other industries or see, uh, they haven't got a yardstick of what it's like to be in other sectors of in terms of what's okay or not okay yeah i mean potentially yeah you, you you're probably right there it's a, a lot of the you know people have worked their way up um and it, yeah met us, most of the people actually that i've worked for have been in construction for 30 40 years so mm-hmm. yeah you probably are correct there yeah yeah, just because uh, it was rem- reminded me of going to work in the prison service, but I worked for the NHS where I'd say I, I didn't notice any, I didn't see any kind of like sexism within the NHS. And I was quite shocked going to work in the prison service. You know, I had some people say, uh, I must say I worked alongside the most amazing people, but I also had experiences of people making comments like I came to work to get away from my wife um talking oh, about, sure yeah, yeah yeah talking about female staff's breasts um or bottoms including to prisoners who they should have been role modeling more appropriate behavior and also you know governors um making jokes about you know enjoying manhandling female governors so i think you know it is quite shocking but i think sometimes that openness with other people from other walks of life coming in forces a a shift and a change because it contrasts what's okay and what's not okay in a way that if it's a closed shop it's not very transparent it makes it harder to get a change doesn't it yeah sure and I do think you know there's this whole everyone protects each other and there is that definite feel of like a, a you know certain got a boys club um and yeah that you know when it's like that there's positive change isn't going to happen yeah yeah is it is it lonely being a woman in construction um it can it has been to be honest in the past when i when i was on site especially like you know having 20 30 guys and then there's you and you're the one kind of person on site that's kind of orchestrating everything and it's, it's difficult to like be friends with people and then uh, especially you know being a, a younger female there's there's definitely a very harsh line between you and the workforce and it, it's it's a, it's a difficult one to kind of because it's not like then you can go and say oh do you know what? i'm not feeling great today or it it 
you know so yeah I suppose on site but I've been quite lucky that throughout my career I've had quite a lot of female allies in in the similar or the same industry that we all kind of you know get together and <laughs> blow off a bit of steam and speak about things so I think yeah if you when you're on site I suppose um that there's not really anywhere for you to go to speak to anybody so yeah thank you and you're 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 talking about the importance of kind of like mentors and supports and you're a board member of the national association of women in construction aren't you what what's this organization do um so we um work you know in london and southeast and we set up networking events workshops seminars panel discussions kind of anything and everything really um to bring women together to you know network meet other people learn skills um and yes yeah, it's, it's been great it's actually been a real game changer for me the last few years and kind of channeled some of my frustrations into trying to do something positive um and i've really enjoyed that and it's nice to kind of we, we meet and we talk about what's happened with us and what we think you know oh this this could be a good topic that could be a good topic and then we kind of go out and try to source people or you know um make connections or use our networks to to do you know talks and seminars and so there's like we've done one on um leadership skills we've done one on esg and construction there's we've done one on like the circular economy so they could be more specific to sustainability or you know it's just it's kind of anything and everything really just bringing women together um it's not just for women men are welcome as well it's, it's nice to it is nice actually when men turn up um it's nice to see that support um and involvement from men i think with a, an industry with you know 85 percent of the workforce is men we really need buy-in and help from those as well so we're not going to do it with you know just us 15 percent um but yeah, so it, you know, it really does vary and um, it's quite a member led thing as well. You know, we get feedback after every event. What would you like us to do? Um, so yeah, I think it's been a really positive experience and we'll you know, continue to work with, with Nowick. And is it easy for you, for women in construction to find opportunities to network with women in other male dominated industries? Um, I wouldn't say, no, not other industries, um, but maybe I haven't really looked, to be honest. Um, I think LinkedIn, since that's been around, um, that's that's helped a lot um, to have that social media kind of platform for professionals in business. Um, I know we use it for now it pretty much as, as our main kind of source. But um, I mean, I did actually do a, a, a women in leadership conference a few weeks ago um, where it was um, women from different male dominated industries and we all did a panel discussion um, and there was somebody from aviation, someone from energy, someone from engineering, others from construction and then there was a lady from roofing so that was really nice to hear other people's experiences um, but there's so much out there at the moment and there's so much out there for now for networking in construction that you know we have so many different women in construction awards um, and it's just increasing that visibility and you know for people to see it you know look at them they're doing it so i can do it as well so it's really positive what would you like to see um change for women in construction Chloe? um probably a lot of things um so i think there needs to be more representation in high level more women in c-suite positions more women at board level um, to really influence that throughout the industry. Um, the CIB have recently appointed a female um, president, which is great. And the RICS, which are the um, surveying governing body, they um, have just published a document about um, retaining women in surveying. So, you know, conversations are happening. It's just, it's, it's, it's gonna take a long time to, you know, it's, it's just, it's so complex and so many different factors. Um, to try to you know normalize it and be visible and you know bring in younger women that are um perhaps you know a bit intimidated coming into an industry like this so i'm starting in mentoring some university students um that um are looking to come into male dominated industry so um hopefully you know that will help inspire some change i think the pay gap as well 
it's not just in construction of course all industries need to be addressed i think more transparency and visibility around that um as well yeah I'm, yeah i'm sure that's absolutely true it's, it's amazing that we're still uncovering or discovering these kinds of inequalities i mean who would have believed that there'd be such a difference between mm. yeah umpires for women's cricket and men's cricket it's just extraordinary but as you said earlier changing a culture is very difficult and it takes a long time doesn't it mm -hmm. so i mean just thinking about the industry uh in general and it's got quite a reputation and quite a high level of suicide in the uh, industry i mean i assume numerically that's mainly uh men um, is it proportionately men or is, is there any difference between men and women's suicide rates? Um, so, well, I looked this up actually. And so men in general are three times more than women um, to commit suicide. And men in construction are three times more that rate. Um, and two people commit suicide um, every day in the construction industry. And... They are predominantly men, yes. Um, so, yeah, there is an imbalance there, for sure. Quite a shocking statistic, really, isn't it? Yeah, very. You, I wonder if we can think a bit about why that um, might be. Do you think it's something about the sector itself, or is it the way that it attracts people with more mental health issues? Um, I think, I mean, possibly in the trades um, tend to be more working class people, um, not necessarily throughout, but, it, you know, the, it tends to be my experience that the guys on site are, are more of a working class background. I'm from a working class background. You know, my husband is a, a builder. He's a working class too. Um, so, yeah, it does tend to be that. Um, and there's that kind of that stigma, isn't there? And the kind of need to be macho and be a man and get on with it and not speak about your feelings. So, and it is, you know, as I said earlier, it's a very high pressured environment. Um, you're expected to do all sorts of hours to get, you know, if there's a deadline, you know, everything else goes out the window, the deadline is the deadline and that's it. So um, that can be quite, you know, have quite a toll on you as well. Well, is there anything more that the construction industry could do to reduce the suicide rate? You know, anything that would would improve things I and mean, it's and you know just listening to what you're saying there about the pressure could those pressures be managed in a different way or eased in any way yeah sure i think that um men, you know buddy systems mentors and stuff could be quite effective um training i think talking training um we've got here we've got mental health champions um and we have a lot of imagery on site of and and posters on site of kind of where to get help, what to do. Um, we try to encourage like a really open door policy um, with our, like we do a lot of work actually with our supply chain because um, the way we contract most of our, so on site, most of our employees will be subcontracted so they don't work directly for the company. Um, and, but we try to work with those to do kind of collaborative kind of workshops, um, wellbeing days on site and kind of, I think as well, it, 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 the atmosphere on site can really change the way you feel coming to work. And if you can, and as much as I said, you know, try not to be to be friends with people, if you can get on, and there, there is that line, um, but you you know, if you see each other while you're making a cup of tea, you can have a chat or, and I think that atmosphere on site, I've worked on sites that were really quite toxic and a toxic atmosphere. Um, and yeah, just dreaded going to work. And then I've worked on other sites where it's quite a collaborative approach. So you you do try and collaborate with the subcontractors and work as one team as opposed to us and you. Um, and I find them those situations much a much nicer place to be, even when there's pressure and there's you know work to be done. Kind of when you can all pull together and and do it as a team, I think it, it alleviates individual pressures. Is there a conscious effort by the industry to create those kind of you know to create a more positive atmosphere on site do some companies focus on that more do that better yeah I mean we do here and it's something that I was really keen to 
to continue and, and bring in here but there's a, actually a really good culture they've got a really good relationship with um their supply chain um really long standing you know people that have worked with them for 25 30 years and um i think partnering is really important um and yeah i'm definitely going to do work like you know with my team as as we grow um to create those better atmospheres on site we kind of we've just done where we've we've all sat down and and we've all discussed you know the program of work how we're going to achieve it what are the challenges and i think from the start it kind of sets the mindset of everybody that we're all in it together and i think that really helps thank you so chloe it can be hard being a minority in any kind of industry but i wonder how have you managed to maintain your own emotional well-being when things get tough um I think it probably haven't. <laughs> no, I mean, it, now week I think, has been really good for me to, I think sometimes when you feel a little bit like you're hitting your head against a brick wall that you're kind of stuck and there's nothing you can do about it. Whereas it's kind of channeling some of that into now week has really helped me feel more positively um, about certain things. I mean, you know, I love my job. I love the industry that I'm in. Um, it's, it's flawed but I, you know it's, it's been such a great career for me I've had so many really positive experience and really positive opportunities um and yeah I just I think that that's really helped my emotional well-being having that feeling of doing something good um and yeah prior to that I think I think for me as well like the, the end result always gives me a really big lift when we've delivered a great project and the client's happy and you know, it's, it's really that results based, and I think that's kind of how I'm channeled to think now, is I kind of thrive on the, you know, the end result, and I kind of have tunnel vision until I get there, I think, okay, I'll, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, you know, we finish in six weeks, we finish in five weeks, in five weeks I'll relax, you know, so it's kind of having goals, I think. What advice would you give to any other young women just starting out in construction? I think confidence is a really big and kind of not being scared to not know everything I think when I first came in I was really intimidated by the fact that I'd never built anything and I didn't know how to really build things and you know sometimes I mean even now I sit in meetings and someone comes out with this acronym for something now I, I've, I'm you know confident enough to say what's that and sometimes the, the person that said it doesn't really know you know so it's kind of I would encourage to ask questions um and not not be scared to not know everything just go for it thank you thanks very much chloe good to have you on thank you yeah thanks very much indeed chloe i particularly like that last answer of yours because the inability to show that i didn't know something and therefore ask a question is something that dogged me throughout my school career i think thanks very much you're welcome thank you for having me